Hey, parents, thanks for being here tonight. Just a little uh, something for you guys. We have water and fresh coffee made in the back if anybody wants to warm themselves up but and stay up all night because <laughs> it's caffeine. But um, we'll get started in just a minute. I see a few more people coming in from the rain, so we'll give them a second to walk in here. All right, we're just about ready to get started. If anybody wants to get a last minute uh, water or coffee in the back, we have some snacks back there as well before we start. Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you guys for taking the time out to be here today. I know it's a rainy day and, you know, nobody really wanted to get out in that weather and drive over here, but thank you guys for being here. It means so much to be able to see how many parents are here tonight that you guys really do care about your spiritual growth of your, of your kids and uh, watching them grow spiritually and, and sending them to us, you know, but really we're here to support you as well. We're going to talk more about that, but before we start with anything, let's go ahead and pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these parents. Thank you so much for their beautiful children that come here and learn about their faith. They come here and they grow deeper in their relationship with you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to be upon each and every one of these parents as they help their students grow 
pray for all of our mentors that are here each and every Wednesday that take their time out, that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit to help them grow. Pray for all of our staff, our clergy, everybody who's going to be an impact on their journey and their walk with you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, awesome. So again, I want to thank you guys for being here. We're going to try to go as fast as we can. There's a lot to cover, um, but we're really excited. My name is Justin. I'm the youth minister here at St. Tim's. Been here for about five or six years, somewhere around there. And uh, it's been a great journey to journey with uh, the students here at St. Tim's, mostly because they have parents that really do care. And I said that, I'll keep saying that, but I've seen that. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I want your approval or anything like that. I'm not a politician. You don't have to vote for me. I already work here. But I'm saying it because I've been at other parishes. I've been at other churches. And I've seen sometimes when there's a parent meeting, we don't have any parents show up, all right? So here we are. We have a parents meeting at the beginning of the year. And you guys are here. You're present in a in a kind of a dangerous time where we got COVID spreading, you got rain outside, and you're here. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to introduce a couple other people that make this possible to have a great youth ministry program uh, at St. Tim's. It's our staff uh, that work alongside, um, our, our staff that work with Edge and Life Teen, um, Miss Jen, who's in the back. If you can come on up here, Miss Jen, I'll have you introduce yourself. Miss Christelle. And Mr. John Holloway, come on up, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here. Like Justin said, we really appreciate it. And it's good to hear this stuff, and hopefully it'll get to your kids, and they'll uh, you know, be excited and want to be here. I do most of the coordinating of what's going on behind the scenes, so I don't stand up front like Justin does, but if you guys ever have any questions or concerns, you can always email us or email me, and I can usually get back to you pretty quick. Um, I am notarizing back here on this back table this evening, so the, uh, the stapled packets on the table, if you haven't completed that yet, if you could put your driver's license number down by the notary stamp area so that it would make it go a lot quicker for us. If you guys handwrite that on there and then just bring me your ID and I can notarize it during the meeting. If we can just quietly do it while Justin's talking, that would be great. And anything else? That was it. Miss Christo. Um, hello, parents. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I am Miss Christo. I've been here about my sixth year now. And um, I, I am also behind the scenes. <laughs> I don't think like Justin right in front of the kids. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I do a lot of the paperwork. So if you have checks, payments, uh, papers, or that different things, I'm at the reception at the youth center too. We have a direct uh, phone line there if you want to call. Um, if I'm there and if I'm not there, I will return the phone call as soon as I can. Easy to uh, reach us to, it's to uh, email us and things like that. So um, unfortunately, all the trips or all the retreats, all the things need a lot of paperwork. So uh, bear with us, but that's the rules as the diocese. It's not, it, there's some from us, some from them. So we always have to do these kind of things, but they're important to keep the children safe and everything. Uh, so if you have any questions, we are there to help you um, and to walk through this edge journey. Um, also, a um, little thing, this summer, for the first time, I went to Hidden Lake with Miss Jen. And uh, this is our, Justin is going to go more in details with that. And it was my first time going to the camp, and I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed myself, but I enjoyed watching the, the, the middle schoolers having such a good time, a good experience. So... If you have some questions, we're very happy to tell you, you know, um, all about it. And here's John. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is John Holloway, and I'm here at St. Tim's as an ECHO apprentice. So ECHO is a program through the University of Notre Dame. Um, it's a master's program, and it involves full-time uh, parish ministry during the year. So my assignment is here, and I just got here two weeks ago. And one of the things that I was asked to help with is 
uh, ministry to parents of youth who are in either EDGE or Life Teen um, because the youth ministry, um, we, so Justin has in, in his heart really that the youth ministry would continue into the home so that um, what the youth receive here um, could be, you know, lived and nourished and grow even more in the home. And a big part of that is um, the parents. And so I'm just here to um, try to find ways to provide some bridge between what the youth are receiving at youth ministry at EDGE um, and the parents. So Justin will explain a little bit more later about concretely what that'll look like. Um, but you'll be receiving some emails and maybe some short video clips from me. Um, and I'm also just here to be of service. If you have any ideas of ways that I could be helpful, please don't hesitate. Uh, reach out. Let me know. My email address is on the website of the parish. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jen. Thank you, Christelle. Thank you, John. Uh, Miss Jen also mentioned if you have two students, you can do both uh, on that same paper that's getting notarized. You could do both students. You don't have to do two different forms. Um, and then we also have mentors that help throughout the year. They're here on Wednesday nights. They're here to lead small groups. They're here to journey with your students, to pray with them. And is there any mentors that are here in this room? We have a few. If you guys can stand up real quick. Some of them are parents. That includes you, Jeremy. Come on. Uh, some of them are parents, but most of them aren't. Um, uh, but they're, they take out Wednesdays uh, to be with your kids and to pray with them. They're not all required to be here at the parent meeting, but like I said, a couple are parents. So thank you guys for all your service and all that you guys do. Um, so I don't know, have you guys ever had an issue with your phone before where you can't get it connected to uh, you know, a cell phone signal or maybe you ran out of a battery, like your batteries ran out? Raise your hand if you've ever had that happen to you. Okay, I think everybody's probably had a drop call at some point, right? So I was on this fishing trip, and when I'm on the trip, you know, I, I usually tell my wife I'm going to go fishing on my days off. It's what I like to do. I have a kayak. I go, you know, to, uh, I go to a couple different places, sometimes Fort DeSoto, sometimes Weedon Island, and I just take my kayak out there, and I fish for the day. Um, and it's a fun trip. I, I don't do this anymore since I had my little baby girl. Now I'm watching her, and I don't take her on the kayak with me because she'll probably drown. Anyway, she's one years old. Um, but... But when I go on these fishing trips, it's great. So this one day, I was catching nothing. And you guys, how many of you guys fish? Anybody fish out there? That's like 80% of the time for me, hopefully. Um, it's probably like that for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you guys are great fishers. But So like I go out, and I'm not catching anything. So it's one of those days where I'm like, man, I want to just catch one fish. And I just keep going at it, trying new spots, doing different things, and nothing's happening. And before you know it, the time's slipping away from me. And I usually tell my wife, like, I'm going to be home right before you get home, you know? So we're, we're, I'm not home late, you know? So she gets home at 5, and I'm usually home, and I'm cleaning off the kayak or whatever. But uh, I realize the sun's going down, so it's getting late. Um, so I'm a little bit scrambling, so I grab my phone. It's in a dry case in my kayak, and I try to call her. I'm going to be late. I realize the sun's going down. I notice oh, like it's an hour past when I was supposed to be home because I've been trying to catch that fish, you know? So uh, basically scrambling and I try to call her, nothing happens, no signal. So I'm like, oh shoot, I got to get closer to shore so I can get a signal so I can let her know because she's probably starting to freak out. Justin's not home yet. He's not answering his phone. You know, what's going on? So I get closer to shore, closer to shore. I paddle as hard as I can. I get to the shore, and I try to do it again. Nothing's happening. It's not connecting. There's no signal. And then finally, I'm like, maybe I'll just shoot her a text, and it'll go through because it doesn't take as much signal and nothing. And I'm wondering, like, what the heck is going on with my phone? So I'm rushing as fast as I can. I get my kayak. I put it on top of my truck. I start heading out. And the whole time I'm calling, there's like nothing happening. And then I jiggle my phone, and my antenna inside my phone, I could hear it rattling. And I'm like, oh, no. There's no way to let her know that I'm on the way. And by now, it's like two hours past when I was supposed to be home. And I'm like, I'm going to get it. Um, this is bad. And I'm probably like worrying her at this point. She thinks I'm dead somewhere in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, eaten by sharks. You know, so I, 
I, I have this brilliant idea. I'm on Dale Mabry in rush hour traffic. Things aren't going great because I still can't get home very quickly because of the traffic. I pull over to a, a McDonald's and I was able to finally connect with her through Wi-Fi calling. So whatever the antenna for the cell phone signal is different than the Wi-Fi signal. I didn't know that, but I tried it and it worked. And I got a hold of her and I was like, babe, I'm so sorry. My phone wasn't working. The antenna's broken or something's going on. I can't understand what it is, but I'm, I'm on my way and I'm so sorry I'm late. She's like, oh my gosh, can you just get me some Chinese food? So I thought she was going to be mad at me, but she just was hungry. Um, so long story short, like, you know, the connection is so important. We don't realize how important it is till you actually lose the connection, right? And the same thing happens, like, even sometimes when maybe, uh, you know, you're, you're getting in your car, you're ready to go somewhere, and then you start to start your car, and you hear click, click, click. How many of you guys have had that happen before? Your battery's dead, right? You're like, oh, this stinks. Like, now I got to go get a new battery. How important it is for our battery to be charged to get us from one place to the next, how important it is for us to be connected so that we can communicate. So many times I think we think of our spiritual lives sort of like a battery where we have to be filled up. But unfortunately, that's really the wrong way to think of our spiritual lives. A battery exists apart from its source. A battery exists apart from its source. In the Bible, in John chapter 15, verse 4, there's a scripture that we're going to go through and really learn for our theme this year. The theme is remain. And I'm just going to read from you this passage, John 15. I want to encourage you to read it with your students or with your children at home. John 15, verses 1 through nine, it says this, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And everyone that does not, that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because you, because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me, and I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. I'm really excited this year because we're diving into a very, very beautiful uh, gospel of John chapter 15. That gospel of the vine and the branches. We are the branches, Jesus is the vine, and we are called to bear much fruit. Instead of batteries that are just temporarily connected, right? Jesus gives us this analogy of the vine and the branches that we are to remain connected at all times on Sunday when we go to church on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and so on every day to be connected and I think what happens a lot of times is students will put a box you know have this box and they put God in it God you're you're going to be part of my life on Sunday but then when I leave church when I leave youth group, eh, maybe you're part of my life, maybe not, but you're really in that box that we put them in, and adults do it as well. I want to challenge all of you as parents, I want to challenge all of our students this year to be connected, to remain in Christ, to remain in God every single moment of the day, every single day. Now, guys, it's been a really tough couple years. We've had COVID, we've had political turmoil, we still have COVID going on, 
It's been difficult to connect with our faith, especially when our churches shut down for the first time in history. Churches, like literally, we closed our doors. That's, that's unheard of. It's never happened. Never. Not even during the bubonic plague. It's crazy how hard it's been to be able to connect with each other, with our friends, with our family. We've lost something this last couple years. But especially with God, with being able to receive the Eucharist on Sundays, We have to regain what that means. We have to look at ourselves and how we can remain in Christ. And in a season where we might feel like all is lost, God reminds us in this scripture that we will be pruned. And in the pruning, there is new life. In the pruning, there is chance for new hope. In the pruning, there's new ways to connect, and a new determination and a thirst for God so that we can remain. Sometimes the best things that get taken away from us remind us of what we're really missing, just like that story when I couldn't connect with my wife. Reminded me of how important that antenna was, or when I turn my car and I hear click, 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 how important that battery is always full. So how is God pruning you? How is he wanting to prune your family? What are you praying for that he's able to prune your children this year? And how can we stay connected to God, to our neighbor, to our friends, to those we haven't seen, maybe relationships we need to mend that's what this, th- this year is going to be really focused on as we dive into this theme, Remain. So that's what our theme is. What I love seeing is when the kids come here and those smiling faces are excited to be with their friends and to connect with each other. When I, when I see them in their small groups, And, you know, it's been like a week since they've seen each other, and they're just so excited to see some familiar faces that they can share their hearts with. We talk about real life in EDGE, not just math problems or, you know, whatever's going on at their school. We we do. We talk about real life things that they're going through and to watch them light up when they can share their hearts and what's going on. What we notice is students really do love retreats. Students love, part of our programming is an encounter night where they get to do some praise and worship and adoration where they sit in silent prayer. Not every kid. I got two middle school boys. I know how hard it is for them to sit still in quiet prayer. But there is something to it because my son that has AD, A, whatever it is, ADD, um, takes pills for it, you know, sorry, he's, it's on public now, sorry, Jeremiah, don't watch this later on, he's probably watching it at home, like, dad, but anyways, he's told me, I really love adoration, there's something about it, when the music's going, I can focus on God, and it's quiet, he's got some sensory things, so like, when it's quiet, it's actually good for him, like, he really can focus So the students tell me they love the times we get to serve. And you guys are going to see, we're going to send out an email. We're doing a shoe drive for the homeless, for our thrift store, where you get opportunity to serve. They they enjoy the games, the sports, our beautiful youth center that we have at St. Tim's. They enjoy the uh, summer camp that Miss Christelle mentioned a little bit uh, of Hidden Lake. Um, Guys, What we have going on in EDGE, this is what I'm getting at, is not just a Wednesday night thing that you drop your kids off at. We have so much going on here in youth ministry outside of Wednesday. And I really hope that by you guys coming tonight, you'll get to see that there's so many great opportunities for our middle schoolers to get involved in the church 
in so many ways and to really have so many opportunities to grow outside of just Wednesdays. So I'm really excited to share some of those things. A couple things, what to expect on a Wednesday, because primarily that's what we do Wednesday nights. So on Wednesday night, uh, just to go over some of the COVID protocols, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but we want to make sure that things are sanitized. You know, we have, san we have uh, you know, uh, hand sanitizer on your way in, just like tonight. Um, we want to make sure that the kids are encouraged to wear their mask. We can't mandate it or anything like that, but we're strongly encouraging the kids to wear their masks. And especially in those small groups, they're going to be with mentors in a close proximity. We're going to strongly encourage that. Um, and, and, and we really just want to make sure that we do the best we can to mitigate some of the spread. Guys, this is, this is a hot topic. This is like political, and this is crazy, and some people are on, you know, everybody's got to wear a mask. Some people, nobody has to wear a mask. So look, guys, I just want to make sure all the kids here are safe, okay? Let's try to encourage our kids to wear masks when they're here. We're in a, in a, in a room, you know, uh, in the youth center, you know, that can get kind of tight, and we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can, all right? Um, but what our nights look like, just going to invite the students to come here about 6.30, but they don't have to get there right at 6.30. You see what happens between 6.30 and about 6.55 is free time in our beautiful youth center. So we, they have time, open gym time to play basketball if they want to play basketball or to, to hit a volleyball around or to be in our cafe and eat a snow cone, play foosball, play ping pong. We got a brand new pool table somebody just donated. So there's all kinds of stuff. We even have some video games. So there's all kinds of things for them to do in that first 20 to 25 minutes. They don't have to get there at 6.30, but they're invited to come. Really try to get them by 6.45, because sometimes we do start our nights maybe a little bit early, but 6.45 is a great time to get them there. And at about 7, or about 6.55, 7 o'clock, we do a gather activity. This is different from open gym, because the gather activity is usually a group game. Everybody's involved. It's usually a group activity, like a relay race or something like that, or a skit that they perform. So these are all things to get them engaged in e with each other, and sometimes, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's just a relay race, and I'm trying to, like, correlate it to the teaching. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the teaching, but we try to, we try to. And then the proclaim, the teaching, this is the lesson. It's usually given by, by our mentors on stage, sometimes a video lesson by some really great video resources that we use through Life Teen. But these teachings, they're engaging, they're interactive, we use props, you know, they're about 10 to 15 minutes, and that's even kind of long. So seven minutes is what I try to tell uh, most of our mentors for those talks. Break, that's when they break out into their discipleship groups, and they get to spend time with that group of 10. Usually it's between 10 and 12, um, and sometimes it's a little bit less, but 10 and 12, and each group has two adult mentors, all right? So, and they not only have that, but they have high school junior mentors. These are our juniors and seniors in high school that are on fire for God. They're our peer ministry leaders. And so they are involved in those groups to really be a great example for these kids. And the middle schoolers look up to them and they want to pray like them and be holy like them. And it's awesome to watch them interact with our high school students. So these high schoolers have been trained they, uh, they work with me like three times a week sometimes. They're also being formed uh, by Randolph Davidson and Mary Heston. So we actually have 40 junior mentors, but that would overwhelm our middle school program. So they have uh, two nights a week that they actually spend in mass, adoration, confession, and formation. Uh, prayer formation. So two nights, uh, two nights out of the month, they will not be at edge. They'll be in prayer formation. And the other two nights, they'll be at edge. So they kind of, I have them split up. So there's 20 of them that'll be at edge, and then 20 of them that'll be in the church. 
So these guys are amazing. They really are a huge backbone of what's going on at Edge. And I feel like that's why a lot of these kids want to come back because they build relationships with these high schoolers that love Jesus. It's really cool. Uh, next thing is the send. So after everybody's in their small group, their discipleship group, they then come back to the main room most of the time, and they go into a prayer uh, activity of some sort. Sometimes this is praise and worship with me on the guitar. Sometimes it's uh, just Ignatius prayer where they use their imagination, or we do Lexio Divina, or even, um, even a Visio Divina which is really good with middle schoolers. If you've never done it before, you just take a painting or an icon or a work of art, and you actually, and those works of art and paintings are based on a gospel reading or a scripture, and you actually just pray through that work of art. You'd be amazed at what some of the kids come up with, like what God is telling them through art. It's so cool. So we do all kinds of uh, prayer activities at the end to really engage their spirit there and, and help them grow. Um, so that's what Wednesdays look like. We're really excited. Um, in the summertime, you guys will notice uh, we continue to do youth ministry throughout the whole summer. We combine all of our junior mentors and edge kids on Wednesday nights in the summertime. And basically, we do about 75% fun and 25% lessons and prayer. Whereas in the regular school year, the fall and the spring, it's the opposite. It's about 75% prayer and lessons and then 25% fun. So, but it's still fun. Even the prayer is fun. We love it. It's, we have a good time. Um, so a little bit about service, just kind of making our way down this agenda here. Um, we have a lot of great opportunities for the students to serve, even if they're in middle school. Now, the majority of our service projects are done by our high schoolers, but we have ways that the middle schoolers can serve as well. And uh, the biggest things are um, we have a, a shoe drive. So maybe maybe there's some shoes at uh, home that need to be collected, you know. Uh, they can be used, or you could go out and buy some shoes. But we have a thrift store in downtown owned by or run by our St. Vincent de Paul ministry. And they've told me that homeless are starting to come in and we ran out of shoes. So they need shoes. Um, and so you'll see uh, there's going to be a box in our youth center that we're going to really try to do a shoe drive. That'll, that'll be a great way to go out and serve. And explain to the kids, you know, we're going to go to Walmart, we're going to buy a pair of shoes, and this is what we're doing it for. There are people that walk around here in Florida on the hot cement without shoes or the soles are wearing off their shoes. So... Um, it's a great education thing that you can do. Speaking of our thrift store, they're looking for families to come out and sort and organize in the thrift store. They don't want just the students to show up. They want mom and dad to show up with the students to work together to do some of these projects at our thrift store. So we'll have information on emails coming out for some of that. Um, we also have an opportunity uh, for the students to participate in our toy drive and, um, and some other things. In, in the Christmas time, we're going to be making letters for the homebound on Wednesday night so that they can send those letters to those, you know, elderly mostly that are at home, you know, that don't have anybody, you know, to talk to and they're lonely. And so we send them uh, Christmas cards made by our middle schoolers, and they draw fun pictures on the front and say whatever they want inside, but it's really, really great activity. Um, so the students here love the service opportunities. Um, uh, the retreats, just kind of making our way, I think you can look on page four of your update there. Um, you guys are, I'm sorry, is it page four? Yeah, page four of our update. There are, um, the majority of those you're going to see are high school, but we do have two middle school uh, retreats. One is a lock-in here on campus, a Friday uh, to a Saturday morning, um, and that's really going to dive into our theme that I just talked about, John 15, Remain. Um, but then we have another one coming up uh, that'll be in January 29th, and that is at Mary Help of Christians. It's a full-day retreat. We have so much fun there. Uh, there's actually some canoes, and we do some canoeing and kayaking uh, while we're there at Mary Help. We have a great time. Um, so that retreat is called Epic, 
I'm sorry, I take that back. Love is, love is. Um, there's a little uh, QR code by each one of these things, and basically you just take your phone out, and you can go to your camera on your phone and hold it over that QR code, just like you do at a restaurant in the menu, and it'll pop it right up, and you can register for those uh, retreats. We have a great time on the retreats, and they're, they're mostly led by our, our high schoolers, so they, they make it fun. Um, looking at a few other events that we have, the Fall Festival is coming up October 23rd. I do have a misprint in, the, um, in there somewhere. I can't remember uh, in the actual... Oh, what page is that? Uh, it says Friday, October 23rd. It's actually Saturday, October 23rd. Um, I was going to announce something really great about the Fall Festival. It is still going to be great, but uh, we did have to cancel the fireworks. I had said that on Sunday we had a fireworks show ready to go, uh, but the DOT, because we're so close to the, um, the highway here, wasn't going to allow us to do it. So... We had to cancel the fireworks. We, it's okay. We're going to have fun. We do have a talent show. You guys will see on, on your tables. We have St. Timothy's Got Talent. So this is actually something that one of our middle schoolers came up with. So she said, Mr. Justin, can we do a talent show on Wednesday night? And I said, yeah, that would be a great idea. She came up with a whole proposal. Oh, yes, Allison. Oh, Allison's right here. Stand up, Allison. Oh, she's here. I didn't even know that. <laughs> and so she came up with a whole proposal, and I said, you know what? Even better. Let's not do it on Wednesday. Let's do it in front of the whole parish on the main stage. We're going to do a talent show for the fall festival. So she's already the first one signed up to do her talent. I'm excited to see what that is. What are your kids' talents? Sign them up. We'd love to see that happen. We got a couple judges uh, that are professionals in the field of uh, voice, but they haven't gotten back to me yet, so I'm not going to reveal who they are, but we're going to have some really cool judges at that fall, at that America's Got Talent, or St. Timothy's Got Talent. Um, so whatever they have, it doesn't have to be singing. It could be juggling, magic shows, whatever their talent is, you know? Some of them play instruments, so it's going to be a great time. A couple other things that are going on there that we could use parents' help with is the pumpkin tent. We are going to be carving pumpkins. You guys see a big old orange flyer there, so you could sign up using that QR code to help us at our pumpkin tent. We really are just looking for a few parents that can help kids carve pumpkins. I mean, how cool is that, that you get to do that? You're going to love it. Um, and we also, uh, we haven't put anything out on this, but the Holiday Boutique will be coming out November 13th. We're going to be looking for some student help and some parent help at the Holiday Boutique, but we're still figuring out the hours and what that's going to look like. So we haven't put anything out yet for that. Um, looking at some of the other events that we have, you're going to notice there's also a Holy Ghost Dance uh, you're going to see that on our calendar. If you look on uh, in the update on page four, on page four, Holy Ghost Dance, that's coming up October the 30th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Now, of course, you know that middle schoolers probably aren't going to like dance or anything, but I will tell you they are super excited to get dressed up. So we're going to have a costume party. Now, parents... We don't want anything like gory, you know, we don't want anything that's inappropriate, which I don't think it's going to happen, right? You're not going to let your kids out the door looking like that. So, but we, you know, be cute and, and come on uh, to, the, to, the, to the Holy Ghost dance. There's, um, do we have a QR code for that? Maybe not. I don't remember if I did that. We'll send it out. It'll be in an email. You guys will see it. It'll be coming up soon. Um, but we have all kinds of activities planned for that, including a costume party type thing. It'll be all kinds of fun games at that Holy Ghost dance. Um, a lot of our students that went to Hidden Lake, um, Allison's here. She was one of them. My boys, they all have this text message group. And so my boys give me the inside scoop sometimes. Like I said, they are like, they're already planning what they're going to wear for this dance. So... They're super excited about it. Um, and the other thing they're super, super excited about is Hidden Lake. 
And so I wanted to share with you guys, this is uh, probably one of our biggest middle school events of the year, okay? We take, you know, between 30 and 40 students to Hidden Lake. This year was a little bit less because of COVID and some of the worries and concerns there. So we're hoping to get those numbers back up next summer. Um, we take a bus load of kids, and it's in the mountains of Georgia. It's a very beautiful camp run by our National Life Team program. Uh, they, they have missionaries that run this camp. It is super holy, but it's also super fun. They do ropes course. They have a big old blob in, in, the, um, in the lake. There's uh, mud games. There's an obstacle course that they do. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Hikes. So um, the kids are really excited to, to get signed up. That went last year, and we're really excited to do it again next year. Now, we don't get the dates until November, um, but we'll put in three top dates that we want, uh, and they'll tell us one of the three that we get. We're really trying to vie for the very beginning of June, so that week in the beginning of June. Why is that? Well, we have some middle schoolers that will want to do VBS. That's the second and third week of June. And we also have a lot of um, other events happening throughout June where we can't really, you know, get in the way of, including our GSP uh, trip and some other things. So what I want to do for, me, for you guys is give you the first opportunity to get the link to register for Hidden Lake. So any of the parents that didn't make it to this meeting, they're not going to have that link. Now, I have to tell you a secret. When I did this for high school a couple days ago, we sold out in about 10 minutes. Christelle had her laptop over here and was looking, and in about 10 minutes, we had 44 uh, people register, middle school or high schoolers register for our high school summer camp, Cove Crest. So... Uh, it's really first come, first serve to register for that trip. Uh, if you're in, you're in, and you've saved your spot. If you're not, uh, you might get put on a wait list, and there still might be an opportunity to go, but we only take 40. So uh, there's only 40 spots. Yes, sir. It'll probably be around June, beginning of June, the first week in June. Exactly. That's what we're shooting for. <laughs> yeah. We, we give them at 4 a.m. so that we can get there by 2 or 1, whatever it is. And then we get home Sunday night at about 10 or Saturday night at 10 p.m. And we're going to play a little video so you guys can see what it's, what it's like at Cove Crest. Just a short video. <laughs>
just to clear it up, uh, so if there is a wait list um, and you decide you can't go after all, we can get your deposit back. But if there's no wait list, you lose your deposit, unfortunately. Sorry. Most likely there's going to be a wait list. Almost every year there is, so. All right, we'll skip to the end of the video here. It's a long one. It's longer than I thought. Gabe, you want to skip this final portion there? All the fun, and then, you know, the prayer times, of course. So there's Mass every single day at Hidden Lake. There's also confession opportunities throughout the week and adoration a couple times throughout that week. They hire national speakers, uh, you know, that basically are really great with middle schoolers um, to come and host for the week. Uh, there's Father Lou. You just saw Father Lou. Uh, so they also they also have amazing priests that work with the kids, and um, it's just a great experience for the kids to be able to take time away from the computer, away from their electronics and video games, just to be with God on literally on the mountaintop, you know, with God, and to encounter Him in a powerful way. Something we probably all need, right? Not just kids. <laughs> So one day we'll come up with a, a parent camp. It'd be just as fun. Yes, we'll also have opportunities for fundraising. Um, we have a, a really great fundraiser in March called um, March Mud... Uh, March Mudness. Mulch... What is it? Mulch Madness, sorry. Mulch Madness, and uh, we go out and deliver mulch... Um, and really the kids that participate in that, they're able to raise at least $100 for that, sometimes more, uh, depending on the year. Um, we have other opportunities. I don't know, you wanna speak about them? Jen does all of our fundraising stuff, so. Yes, so we do do jewelry sales during the year, which you sell at jewelry during the masses. Oh, jewelry during the masses, you can uh, sign up for that. We'll send out links. If you register your kids for camps and you're looking for fundraiser ideas, we will send you stuff at the beginning of the year so you can start working on that because there's even pancake breakfast, fish fries. Um, we have several things going on throughout the year. Parents night out in December. Lots of things we try to get the kids involved in so they can, and I also have PDQ cards in my office that if you want to just go sell those to your family and friends or give them as gifts but you buy them for four dollars and then you make four dollars on them towards whatever trip you want your, you or your kids going on but there's a lot of different things and when you sign up we'll send you an email with different things coming up so you can mark your calendar and get get on that list and make sure you can um, make some money towards that trip because I, I know my kids in the past have been able to fundraise almost totally for their trip in the year upcoming that camp. So $700 trip, I paid, I paid the 150 and then they pretty much fundraise the rest of the year. So it's just a matter of diligently getting to all the functions or, or doing the sales of the cards or the box. We do card boxes, we do PDQ cards, any of that stuff. You can make it happen, you can earn that 700 or 650 by the end of the year. So don't get discouraged by the price it's it's manageable. I've done it several years, and I have three boys that go to camp, so it, it's it's manageable. Perfect. Um, so while we're talking about the summertime, we have another event, and that's going to be for any of our current seventh and eighth grade students. So uh, if you have a seventh or grader or an eighth grader, uh, they're able to join our GSP trip this summer. Uh, well, next summer, whatever, 2022. Um, so that's a, 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 a week long of service. So they'll go to Bishop McLaughlin, stay the night the whole week, and then they get shipped out every single day to different service sites. Sometimes it's landscaping. Sometimes it's visiting, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the elderly. Sometimes they, like one, uh, this last year, they went out and they cleaned a cemetery. There's a lot of like activities that they did so they didn't interact with people because of COVID. So they made it work though and they, and they did some fun stuff. Um, so that is going to be coming up. We don't have a lot of information on that 
but just check your emails because that's run by the diocese, not by us. And they'll be coming out with the dates and the prices and all of that very shortly. They usually do by November, December. And then um, the registration will probably start December, January, somewhere around there, hopefully. Um, they'll get it out a little sooner this year. So, uh, and then finally, in the summertime, we have our sports camps from ages uh, 8 to 14. These uh, always fill up pretty quickly, and usually around March, we'll put out registration for our sports camp. Anybody had any of their students involved in our sports camps before? Awesome. So we have a great time in sports camp because not only do they get to work with our great coaches on the different sports, we have basketball, soccer, and volleyball, but we also do chapel time with them throughout the day and as part of their break time. So to take a little break from dribbling balls and we actually pray with them. We teach them how to do the rosary. We teach them some other forms of prayer and really have them uh, just enjoy themselves in prayer um, on those sports camps. So it's a really great uh, experience for them. Uh, so the next thing you'll see on there, if you're looking on your agenda, is Encounter Nights. I briefly talked about them. That is part of our EDGE ministry. So every once a month, uh, the first, usually the first uh, Wednesday of the month is an Encounter Night. These are nights where they're going to spend some of that time playing in the gym, just as usual, 6.30 to 7, and then we walk over to the church. And we walk over to the church they're going to hear a talk given by one of our priests, and it's related to the upcoming gospel reading. Then they're going to have some time in praise and worship. They have an opportunity to go to confession, and they have an opportunity to pray. So uh, really, we're going to incorporate some more activities during adoration for the middle schoolers. One thing we noticed is it is hard to sit the whole time and pray for them. So we're going to have some things where they go up and they light a candle at the altar or, you know, some other activities that they can do. They also have a worksheet that they work on throughout the night so they can stay focused on prayer, stay focused on the gospel reading that kind of helps them focus. Now, the encounter nights are something that I want to encourage the whole family to come to not just our students. So if you want to come with your students, you're welcome to come at 6.30. Throw a couple dodgeballs around between 6.30 and 7 with your kids or basketballs or whatever, and then walk over with us. Or if you don't want to do any of that, you just want to come by at 7, just come by with your, with your kids at 7 o'clock and meet us in the church. So those are our encounter nights. Now you're going to notice there is one date that is wrong, and uh, there's an October encounter on the, on the calendar, and our priests are on convocation. So we don't even have any priests here that week. So I had to move it. So our first encounter night is actually September 29th, and you're going to see that on the agenda. It's, it's, it's right there, September 29th. A couple more things. Um, I've said it. Uh, I think John uh, mentioned it. John, when he was up here, mentioned it a bit. But, like, you guys have the most impact on your kids. Bringing them here is great. We love having them here. We support you guys. And we're here to help form these kids in a relationship with Jesus. But the biggest impact statistically is going to be their parents. We just know that. I've done the research. And so what are we doing as parents to make sure we're full, to make sure we're recharging our batteries, to make sure we're always connected to God, to remain in him? It's so important because we can get so lost. I'm living it right now. I'm a parent of two middle schoolers and a one-year-old. So I know it's not easy. We're basically Uber drivers throughout the week, driving our kids from one place to the next. You know, it's, it's, it's messy sometimes with the things that we deal with in our, with our relationships with our spouse. Sometimes it's just hard to find a date night or it's hard to, you know, find time to pray or it's hard to know how to pray when you like the silence and your kids are throwing balls around the house. I know. I've experienced it, but we have to find ways that we can connect with God so that we can fill our kids. I'm so excited to be able to give you guys some tools 
and resources this year. And one of them is a program that we already have established here at St. Tim's. And not only that, it runs on Wednesday nights, which is even better. It would be so easy for you to drop your kid off and come to this program to see what's going on. So I've invited Michelle Lorraine to come up here and to speak to us just briefly about Unbound. Wow, wonderful introduction. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for having me too. Um, my name is Michelle Lorraine, and I'm the lead for the Unbound ministry here at St. Timothy's. We've been here for going on four years now. We also have uh, teams, prayer teams at St. Lawrence as well that are available to pray with you. I'm actually really excited to be here this evening to talk with you because I, too, am a parent and a spouse. Um, and, you know, Justin really, I think, nailed it. Um, you know, it's such, it's challenging. For me, I think it was one of the most, two of the most challenging things I've ever done. And I think it is, is if not the most challenging vocations that we can be called to in life. So I have just a couple minutes to talk with you tonight. So I'd just like to quickly share with you a couple things. First of all, my story for two reasons. One is to help you to understand who, who Unbound can benefit. Um, also, um, testimony is so powerful. And so I want to share that with you um, so you can kind of experience how it works. What I want to talk with you also about what Unbound is. And then if you'd like to get some more information about it or receive prayer, I'll talk with you about how to do that as well. So as we hear so many times in scripture, personal testimony is the vehicle through which many came to know the truth and love of Jesus Christ. And so I share with you tonight in that sentiment my personal testimony, and like I said before, also to help you to understand who Unbound can benefit. So like most of us, I came out of childhood with many distorted views of who I was. For me, I believed I was unloved, unwanted, that my voice and my feelings just didn't matter. I felt alone in the world and began to believe that I had to take care of everything on my own. I responded to those beliefs by striving, trying to be perfect, in hopes that I might earn the love of those around me. I learned to isolate out of feelings of unwor unworthiness and insecurity. I went into myself instead of turning to God. Those distorted truths and lies became the lenses through which I began to see all of life, and inevitably, I carried them into my marriage in the form of codependency. When my husband, in his humanness, was unable to fill that God-sized hole in me, I turned to my children to fill that need. I became the typical controlling helicopter mom, fearful that if I didn't control every aspect of my life and of my children's, that I would spiral completely out of control. I was overcome with constant worry and anxiety, which eventually turned into a deep depression. Are you or someone you know stuck in that, type of, that same type of place, a place keeping you or them from being the parent, the spouse, the sister or brother that you would like to be, or having that intimacy with God that you, that you so desire? Unbound prayer brought to light the many lies that I was believing and exposed them to the truths of who I really am in God, in God's eyes. And I no longer suffer from the anxiety, the depression. I no longer suffer from those feelings of unworthiness because I know who I am in Christ. And that's what Unbound does is it brings us into that relationship with Jesus Christ and helps us to understand who we truly are and created to be in God's eyes. So my story is just one of many examples that we've seen over the past four years um, of people that have been set free through the Unbound ministry. So what is Unbound? Um, Unbound is a healing and deliverance ministry. And it's unlike most prayer that we as Christians are used to. Most of us are used to an intercessory type prayer where a priest or a friend will lay their hand over our heads and say a quick prayer. Um, Unbound prayer sessions can last up to two hours, and they are designed to allow the person to sit in a very confidential, loving environment and tell their story and allow their story to be heard. And that's why we, we ask that you allow for two hours. Any Usually the sessions will take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, but we ask you to allow that time so that you don't feel rushed, that we can take our time. 
We never dig and we never probe. We just allow you to share your story and allow you to share those places of woundedness or places where you feel you are stuck. Each session consists of a trained lead and one or two intercessors. The intercessor's roles are, role is to quietly cover the prayer and session with the Lord, while the lead, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, leads you through your story. We ask that you don't worry um, when coming to a session to bring a whole list of things that you'd like to cover, but rather that which is heaviest on your heart today. Where do you feel you're stuck today? And that's where the lead will start. And we just allow the Holy, Holy Spirit to, we just lean into the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us through um, the session from that place. So there's nothing to be anxious about when you're coming that you have to have a whole list of things or worry about what will you talk about. Um, it just unfolds. Um, so the lead will begin with a question like, what is it that's heaviest on your heart today? Or where do you feel you're stuck or like, would like healing? The lead will ask you to focus not so much on the minute details of your story, but rather your responses to the situations that you present. In my life, my responses to what was happening in my life was isolation, withdrawal, anxiety, fear and worry, and mostly control. Um, and that's just to name a few. Focusing on the responses will help the Holy Spirit to lead you to the place of woundedness that we refer to and unbound as the entryway, the place where, the, where you first started to believe those lies to be true um, and that you now th through which you now see life. For me, it was when I first learned as a child that, um, that, I didn't, that my voice didn't matter, that what I had to say, no one really cared or wanted to listen to that, that I didn't belong and that I felt as though I was alone in life. I felt I had to be in control. So I took that belief not only into my earthly relationships, but also into my relationship with God. I was in control, so I guess he must not be, right? He can't be trusted to care for me. I have to care for myself. These were the things that I was believing. The enemy wants nothing more than for us to believe that God is not a good father. Unbound is a gospel-based prayer model designed to expose those lies and speak the truth of Jesus Christ and the Father into those places of darkness and lies of the enemy and to expose the confusion and woundedness that they cause in our lives. So if any of this is resonating with you tonight and you'd like to receive more information about Unbound or if you're interested in scheduling a prayer session, please go to our St. Timothy webpage under Outreach Ministries and there's a lot of information there. There's a short video, um, and there's a little button you can click on that will take you to a, a, a form that you can fill out to schedule a prayer session. You can also, there's my phone number's on there, my ministry phone number, my, my ministry email is on there. Please, if you have any questions at all, if you're just kind of thinking about things or you might know someone that might need the, a prayer session or need more information, please give me a call. I'd love to chat with you about it. We do have trained teams, as Justin said, the first Wednesday of every month. We will keep our schedule next month, and we will be here on the first Wednesday. And, and, but then going forward, of course, we'll be with uh, Justin during the encounter ministries at night. So we'll be there right after the 6 o'clock mass. We have teams available. You can register online and, and let us know you're coming, and you can come for prayer. We also have daytime appointments on Mondays from 1 to 4. It's the third Monday of each month. All this is on the web page. Um, we also do prayer by appointment. If neither of those times work, we're happy to work with your schedule and to meet with you. Um, your children are also welcome, your young adults, ages 15 to 17, with an adult present. We can also pray with them. So please give me a call if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your attention tonight, and God bless you and each of your families. so great to be able to offer that to you guys. Um, we have some other resources that we'll be sending you guys. Uh, you're going to be receiving um, weekly emails from Parent Life Ministry. Uh, those weekly emails are going to be different than your youth ministry update emails, and they're really going to focus on helping you as a parent have tools to be able to minister to your child. Um, we also are going to have something called On the Way Home. That's going to be coming to you guys as well. Those will be in the youth ministry updates. On the Way Home is something that John Holloway, our Echo, is developing. And those are going to be questions and background about what we're learning on our Wednesday nights so that on the way home, you can ask your kids, 
what you what they did that night and you have some engaging questions to be able to talk to them about how many guys have ever talked to your kids after a night hey what did you talk about i don't know exactly i have two boys they do this they do that every time and i know we're talking about stuff so this will refresh their memory oh i i saw that you know justin sent out you guys talked about you know jesus as you know um, died on the cross, you know, whatever, whatever the topic is, and then you can engage them with some questions. Um, speaking of that, I did forget to talk about what we're t our topics are going to be. It's on the front page there. Um, our series, we're going to be talking a lot about prayer. We're going to be talking about brotherhood and sisterhood. Included in that is how God's created us male and female. We will be touching upon that. Um, we're also going to be going through the Mass and really talking about the signs, the symbols, all the things that is, is happening at the Mass to really get them to understand what Mass is. You know, for me, when I was a middle schooler, I was just bored out of my mind counting the ceiling tiles. I mean, I, I didn't really understand what was going on until it was explained to me Then I was like, my eyes were open, and I realized how beautiful that prayer of the mass is. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be breaking open God's word and scripture. The kids all don't have to bring Bibles uh, on Wednesday nights. We have a bunch of Bibles along the uh, wall that we have them pull out, and we teach them how to look for scripture and how to read scripture. So it's great. And then we have some other nights. We have some nights where we're really diving into the seasons of the church, one of them being Lent. There's so much to learn throughout Lent, and so we're pulling some of that out. We have some issue nights where we just deal with topics that they're maybe struggling with. We have one on friendship. Uh, we also have one on stress, how to cope and deal with stress. Um, then we have some fun nights for our parents and students to come to. Uh, there's really uh, two big ones. Um, the Bunko Baby. All right, I don't know if you guys have ever played Bunko. We're going to play some Bunko with our kids. And some of you guys are looking at me like, what? Are you kidding? It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so come with your kids. We're going to play Bunko. And then our last one at the end of the year in the spring is a luau. So we're going to have all kinds of spring luau type activities outdoors and indoors. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have a little barbecue that night. So make sure you come with your kids. These are fun nights, really, so that you can have some fun with your kids. Last year we did, uh, a couple years ago, I remember a dad coming up to me and saying how much fun he had throwing dodgeballs at his son, all right? So that, that's what these nights are all about, to be able to throw dodgeballs at your kids and get it all out, you know? But um, we'll do some fun stuff there. We also have a Thanksgiving night. Uh, that's not for parents and students, but it's a night that we really... Uh, we'll have you guys involved in that uh, we all bring different items to share for that Thanksgiving night. So I don't know what those are yet. Usually it's like sixth graders bring rolls, seventh graders bring drinks, eighth graders, you know, bring a side item or something. So we, we haven't put that out there yet, but we will look for those emails. And we usually do a Christmas night too. We're not just talking about Santa, of course. We talk about what the reason for the season is. So those are all some of the nights that we're going to be going through this year. Um, and then finally, um, if you look on the back, uh, there is a, a link to uh, ltparentlife.com. Um, you guys, uh, because you're members here, uh, you're able to log on using our parish code, Timothy33558, and utilize some of those parent blogs and resources, video series, uh, marriage uh, links there to help you enrich yourselves, all right, as parents. So we belong to that, and you guys have a free subscription to that by belonging here. So last but not least, want to go through some of the safe environment. Uh, this is something that we have to do at all the parent meetings required by the diocese. So it's not only something we do for the parents, but we go through some of these things with our students so you guys will know what the students are going through requiring safe environment. First of all, our mentors are all safe environment trained. They're also background checked and fingerprinted, um, and we have been training with them and know them uh, you know, fairly well. You're not getting anybody crazy. Um, so it, it's a great uh, program that we have for our mentors to be able to go through to learn how to protect themselves and how to protect our students and make them a, a safe environment here. Um, so the teens are going to receive this on our kickoff night, September 8th, 
and let's go. First, the first thing we're going to go through real quick. Hold on one second. Whew. The first thing we're going to go through is do's and don'ts of physical affection. So we'll talk about uh, the do's of affection. So patting on the head's fine, patting on the back's fine, patting on the shoulder, verbal praise of recognition, uh, holding hands during prayer, uh, side hugs, handshakes, fist bumps, high fives, sitting uh, close. Probably that that was made before COVID. We won't. We'll try to mitigate some of that. Uh, the don'ts of affection: any form of unwanted affection, shaking, punching pulling hair, uh, using objects to hit people, full frontal hugs are not allowed, touching in general, genital, chest, or buttocks, clinging to legs, uh, sitting on the lap, uh, massaging and rubbing, tickling, wrestling, games with inappropriate touching. Those are all the don'ts of physical affection. Do's and don'ts of emotional affection. So the do's, do pray for one another, do uh, give advice, encourage each other, words of affirmation, praise, saying, well, job, well done, good job. Those are all good. The don'ts, uh, we don't want people screaming at each other or name-calling, ridiculing, gossiping, uh, tearing one another down, ignoring each other, using vulgar jokes or vulgar speech, um, sharing or making somebody watch inappropriate material, I know the kids all have phones nowadays, so we just want to protect all of our students here on campus, tell them to put their phones away. Um, keeping inappropriate behavior a secret, uh, bribery, intimidation, all those are don'ts. So we teach the students what to do if um, they've been physically or emotionally hurt by a peer or an adult. And the first thing we do is to teach them to use their voice. So I'm going to do it with you guys as well. If any form of unwanted physical or emotional uh, abuse is coming at you, you guys have the right to say no. So we're going to practice that on three. Let me hear it. One, two, three. No. There you go. Oh, man, you guys have a great voice. Awesome. So we teach the kids how to use their voice. I know it sounds ridiculous, but believe me or not, it, it actually is very helpful to teach them that. Uh, they have the power to say no. That's the first line of defense. So next, and then, oh, and then to tell and report it to a mentor, a leader, or a parent, for sure. Next. A couple other house rules that we have here on campus uh, that we have confidentiality in our groups. Um, if they share something, though, however, that's going to harm them or harm somebody else, then it gets reported, and we let them know that as well. So, like, I guess a good example, maybe maybe not a good example, none of these are going to be good, but an example, like, if they share that they're going to put a mailbox bomb in Justin's mailbox tomorrow, uh, then I would want the mentor to report that to me so I don't blow my hand off, right? So it's going to harm somebody. Or a more serious note, if they were, you know, sharing that they're cutting themselves or something like that, that kind of thing gets reported to us. Um, so there are things that, you know, for sure, you know, we want to try to keep confidential. But if anybody's in question, the mentor has any question at all, they always report that stuff to us, um, to me, and, you know, and I relay that stuff to the parents. So we're here to journey with these kids. We want them to have a safe place where they can share their hearts. But at the end of the day, we want them safe, and we love them, and we want to care for them. A um, couple other things, keeping the youth center clean, that's going to be a big one. Uh, don't get behind closed doors uh, without any supervision. All of our doors, however, they do have a glass in them, so you can see right through at any point in time. Um, leaving designated areas or uh, the group unless specified by a leader. Um, one thing we really have to be careful with, we try our best to monitor all of our areas, but if the kid says, like, for example, I'm going to the bathroom, and we trust that they're going to the bathroom, that they're not leaving out the door. Most of the time, almost 100% of the time, Christelle's right there at the doors, but hopefully they're not leaving out the door to go walk to the gas station, you know, or something like that. Um, never really has happened with middle school, but it has with high school, so we have to put that in there. Um, don't leave designated areas. Uh, the cell phones, okay, you're, yep, you're right, Gabe. You got it. Cell phones or other electronics kind of put away. Be modest in your dress when you come here. Respect each other. And then let's just have a good attitude. 
We're going to have some fun in there. We're going to play hard. There's not a lot of time for them to get in trouble, really, because we're just so active. There's no boredom happening. I mean, there's they're going from one thing to the next. Um, for parents, just let's make sure that we stay well informed of all the events, activities, things that our kids are involved in. Uh, parents are encouraged to volunteer or chaperone for events um, and to provide feedback to us. Like, if there's stuff that's going on and, you know, you have some criticisms and um, suggestions, please let us know. We're willing to listen to you and, and do what we can to make sure these kids get to heaven. Next. A uh, couple other things for you as parents, model safe behavior, um, support the values that we teach here in the Catholic Church. If, you, you know, uh, you have any questions about some of the teachings that we have in the church, I'm here. Uh, Randolph just got his master's degree in theology, and he now works here in the parish. So, like, we, we try our best to find you the right answers and, and help you so that you can explain some of these things to the kids. Um, encourage them to share their concerns. Encourage the kids to trust in you, to trust in God. Uh, know where they're at and who they're with. Monitor their, um, their peers and, and who they're hanging out with. Next thing. A couple more things, I think. Listen to their music. Okay, that's a big influencer on students. Um, check the history of their sites that they visited on their computers, on their phones. Uh, some of you guys probably have some apps where you can really monitor that well. And middle school is a, a time where these students are getting involved more on their phones, and it's really becoming a challenge to monitor everything. Try to, you know, we'll, we'll be providing some resources. You'll see them throughout the year where we talk about social media and stuff like that. So hopefully we can help you provide you with some apps that will help out with that. That's for a whole other talk, though. Um, check messaging and text messages, and be sure cell phones have emergency numbers plugged in. I think that's it. Nope, there's more. Wait, there's more. Discuss the information that you shared in the class. Report suspicious behavior. Um, partner with us for sure and communicate any questions and concerns. I think that's it. Gabe, is that it? All right. We got through it. Good job, you guys. You got through your training. Awesome. So uh, that's our safe environment. couple last things on the back of your uh, agenda or your update. You're going to see we have an Instagram page. We also have a Facebook group. Um, if you want to belong to the Facebook group, it's private. So there's a question you have to answer, and the question is, like, what's your student's name? So that I can, you know, know who is on that group. Um, also, this recording of this talk, if you want to really watch me again talk about all this for another two hours, you can go on that Facebook group and watch it again because it's recording right now. Um, and then, finally, there's uh, the best way to communicate with us is through email. Um, our emails are there, and also our website has a bunch of those links. If you don't know how to do the QR code, you can go right to our website and find almost all of those links. Um, and then finally, this is another way we want to communicate with you guys this year. Uh, we started doing it a little bit last year, but didn't really do a great job with it. But we have, uh, we're going to start a um, group me, so it's an app that you'll have to get on your phone. But then if you scan that QR code, you'll be linked right in to join our text message group. So it's not a regular text message, but it's through this app called GroupMe. And we'd love for you guys, all, all of our parents, to belong to the GroupMe. It's especially helpful, let's say, a tornado starts coming in the middle of edge night for me to get a quick text message out to you guys uh, to say what's happening on the ground. Uh, and it's really going to be useful for emergencies, but we'll also post things that are happening uh, to be updated with events and things like that. Um, so hopefully you guys can all scan that in your phones and join the group me. Actually, I think my phone's vibrating. Some of you guys must be doing that right now. So awesome. Uh, last but not least, uh, ways, other ways you guys can help birthday cards to teens. Uh, we'd love for a couple parents that maybe are staying at home to be able to send a snail mail card to our kids from youth ministry to say happy birthday. Um, so that would be a donation of your time and talent 
uh, really, if you could buy those cards. If you can't, we can try to find cards for you. But we just need moms to be able to stay home. We can give you a list. And hopefully, if we get 12, then you only have to do one month a year. So if we get 12 parents to do birthday cards, you only have to do one month. And uh, you'll want to tell Miss Christelle. Uh, you can email her or talk to her after this meeting about signing up to help with birthday cards. And I think that's it. Um, anybody have any questions, concerns, complaints, comments, uh, you know, that would be beneficial for us all? Yes, ma'am. It's actually for the whole parish. Yep, you can bring your whole family. You can bring grandma. You can bring your next door neighbor. I encourage you to. It's going to be a cool thing. Those are just for parents and students. Bring your other kids too, unless they're going to be a huge challenge. Um, most of the stuff we're doing, like the luau, bunko might be a little tough if you got a little one running around. But the luau for sure. Bring your kids. We want the whole family involved. I know how that is. I got a one-year-old now. I'm like, oh gosh, we got to carry her everywhere. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, yes. We are still in need of a couple mentors. I think specifically females, right? Whoop, just kidding. We need one male and one female. So if you're interested, God's tugging on your heart to be here every Wednesday to be with these kids, you know, on Wednesday night. You wouldn't necessarily be in charge of a group. We have, uh, well, you'd be with a group, but we have some other mentors that have experience, and we'd put you as a second mentor just to be there with that class for sure to, to help out, to monitor, to even engage in the conversations with the kids. Um, a lot of our high schoolers do some of that too, so these kids have so many people like leading them and journeying with them. It's incredible. But uh, we do. We need a few more adults, one male, one female. So, And we won't put you with your kids because that could get awkward, right? If they're saying, you know, Dad, and he's always, you know, yelling at me. And, and that would be kind of weird if Dad was in the group. <laughs> then we'd have family feud. So that no, would be good. So if you're interested in doing that, talk to Miss Jen. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's stand up. Let's close in a prayer. Thank you for being patient. Glad I was able to get you out of here by 8 o'clock. Um, let's just offer all of our intentions, our family, our kids, um, all those who are struggling with, with COVID right now, all those who are struggling overseas, uh, those, those big things that are happening in Afghanistan, and for our country, um, for our parish. Let's pray that we have holy families um, and grow in holiness together with our kids. And let's ask for the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you guys so much. And by the way, I checked the constant contact. We have about 23 people signed up for Hidden Lake, so we still have some space. We have 40 spots, so you can take a deep breath if you haven't got a spot yet. The life may not be easy when, when And everything that I need